What's going on everybody? Thanks so much for joining me here today. My name is Jeremy. I'm a motion graphics designer, animator, and 3D hobbyist. This show is an unrehearsed screen recording of my workflow and a peek into my journey to develop a deeper design skill set. Here it's not so much practice makes perfect, but more practice makes progress. This is The Drill. All right, and this week I'm going to be jumping into some soft body dynamic simulations, uh, taking a little break from X particles and third party uh, plugins and just playing around with the dynamics built into Cinema 4D itself. So I'm taking inspiration from a post I saw on Instagram by Lucas Vogier, I believe is how uh, Lucas pronounced his last name. Um, and Lucas did this work for uh, Man vs. Machine, one of my favorite uh, studios working right now. Um, the link to the post is down below. I'm sure there was a ton of people working on this actual spot. Um, and it was for uh, uh, Nike Air Max, it was for a Kiss My Airs um, uh, spot. So uh, specifically what I was going for was this uh, kind of like Plinko, Plinketto or whatever it is from um, Let's make a deal. The price is right. Whatever show. Um, it's like a reverse uh, Plinko um, simulation where these uh, almost balloony kind of light uh, spheres uh, fall through the Plinko board um, upwardly. So um, at first what I was going to do is just uh, have them fall, um, you know, using standard gravity and then rotate my whole video layer upside down, uh, you know, 180 degrees to get that effect. But I wanted to play around with um, adding some buoyancy um, and, and getting that floating feel and nature to my spheres. So uh, you can see already I ha was having a, a really uh, hard time with the collisions in this. And you'll see in the final render that I have, um, I'm not totally satisfied with how this came out. There's a lot of times where my spheres were grabbing onto the pegs on the on the pegboard and getting um, dr uh, the I don't know if it was the friction or what. Um, I'm gonna do more research into what's causing it, but uh, you can see some right there just ballooned out. But it's like grabbing the pegs and then it would stretch. And here you go right there, it's stretching and like completely distorting the spheres um, so there was a lot of uh, tweaking around with the project settings what I found was like I could get one one sphere to work how I wanted it to work um, and then once I added a whole bunch of them at first I was doing it with a cloner and it was it was just massively bogging down the system uh, so I actually just manually cloned out each one and um, I was having better results and um, but when I got a whole bunch of those, I, I, I'm not sure if it was just so many calculations going on at once. It might be that I need to uh, set up my settings to sample more and then uh, just really give it time to simulate. But I got to a spot that I was, I was pretty happy with. Um, I, what I was setting up here was uh, I have a wall on the front side and a wall on the sides of this pegboard that are acting as colliders. They're just invisible to the renderer so that these balls were hopefully staying in the scene a little bit. Uh, then what I was doing here is just setting up uh, lighting using some uh, Grayscale Gorilla HDRIs uh, to just get the lighting I want. Um, you can look in Lucas's post and it's like this very bright, um, it's very popular style right now. It's like this bright white um, and almost like a marble kind of texture um, to the spheres. I took the art direction right from that. I was trying to replicate that shot nicely. It's it's uh, texturing and, and uh, uh, styling that I have been really admiring lately from you know all over Instagram and stuff like that so I wanted to use that to, to try to replicate that and and just learn how people are putting that together so um, here with uh, in After Effects is pretty straightforward I uh, just put a motion blur on it using real smart motion blur um, a high pass filter glow vignette um, but I, what I wanted to talk about briefly was the the color grade so I'm actually using a LUT from and I do this uh, each week I use a LUT um, and Lumetri color to um, apply a little bit of curves and stuff like that but also pro apply lookup tables I'm actually using one from film riot for this one it's uh, from um, it's a rec 709 color space for from alien covenant 
and it got this cool uh, blue, uh, blue like a cool gray look that I, that I was really going for. Um, so here's the render. You could see that uh, some of these balls, especially these clear ones, uh, in like the uh, left third of the screen, they're grabbing those pegs and kind of getting stuck on those. So I want to do more research and figure out how to do that. But I'm really happy with how this came out. Um, it's not. It, it definitely takes inspiration from Lucas's post, but it's far enough away that it's it's kind of its its own thing. Um, uh, not as far as original idea, original thought, but um, as far as the actual look and simulation that came out, it, it, it's uh, I think it came out pretty different from what Lucas did. Um, I would favor Lucas's uh, rendering of it though. So thank you so much for joining me. That's all for this week. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. You know how YouTube works. Like, share, subscribe, and comment down below. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitch at Jeremy underscore Walker. That's J-R-M-Y underscore W-L-K-R. You can visit my website for updates or shoot me an email at Jeremy at JeremyWalker.com. Thanks again so much for watching this week, and I can't wait to see you all next week on The Drill.